and welcome to a new episode about using open source software to create G-code for the CNC. I'm going to show you a very very useful thing how to make intarsia or inlays in wood using Blender. This time I'm not going to use FreeCAD. You can also do that with FreeCAD. I've done it in a couple of episodes if you have seen my channel. But this time I'm going to show you Blender because it's the way to go when you have to do something like this. It's the fastest way to do things. You don't need to modify a lot of things. Just a couple of clicks and you will be ready to mill a very complex inlay such as this one by just opening the SVG and as I've told you making a couple of clicks. What I want to achieve is make an inlay with this design. It's a situation that many people encounter when they have to make an inlay using a different type of wood, a different color. But before moving on to show you how it's done, let me thank all of you for watching, liking, sharing my videos, for subscribing to my channel and of course the ones that have already subscribed to my patreon page thank you very much for the support and if you also want to subscribe to my patreon page you can find the link in the description thank you very much and now let's move on to show you how you can do this type of inlay very quickly let's go to blender go to file import svg select the file click on import it showed up really quickly now i select all the curves holding shift down go to the left menu let me expand it a little bit these are some curve cam tools so if you don't have blender cam installed you should install it and then you will have these options i will press this button curve boolean leave it the type as union and then click ok now i can delete everything except the boolean so all the wine o'clock svg collection i will press delete and it seems it didn't delete the content as well now i only have this boolean that I can much easier move around, place it somewhere near the origin, press ctrl A to apply all the transforms, now the origin is correctly set here. And unlike FreeCAD I don't need to waste time to create a volume, to create objects using various workbenches just to get a simple inlay, a simple intarsia, I don't know exactly how it is called, but here in the menu it's called intarsion, so with the boolean selected press this button and the dialog will pop up here, I will select a cutter diameter, I'm going to use a 1.5 millimeters cutter, I will leave a tolerance of 0.1 millimeters because I want to have a little room in case the two types of wood behave differently, let's set a base material thickness of 21 millimeters, an intarsion material thickness of 8 millimeters. I'm going to use some stock of 8 millimeters thick, and I can simply click OK now. It takes just a fraction of a second, and I have this. Let me hide the initial object, and I have these two objects, which is intarsion pocket and intarsion profile. I believe the name says it all, you can check the sketches, the drawings, all the corners around it, so when I cut with a 1.5 mm tool bit, everything will fit perfectly in the end. Now let's go to the profile and let's double check everything is ok. Here at the bottle when connecting the two edges it sort of made something weird but I think it will look nice in the end. I can anytime go to Inkscape or something else if I'm not satisfied but I think it's way better than any automatic result that I have seen in any other program. Let's select the intarsion pocket first which for some reasons is placed somewhere wrong but I don't really care about this because I will show you in just a couple of moments how to do this very quickly. Go to the render tab, change the render engine to CNC cam, now it's called CNC cam, it's not called Blender cam anymore. Create a new operation after selecting the pocket, make sure the pocket is selected then create the operation and now let's scroll down and update all the variables. I here have an update, I have just updated this version the 1.0.37 a few hours ago. So obviously the Blender Cam team is very active, it keeps on making updates. One bad thing that happened at the last update is I had to install Blender 4.2 because it didn't work at all with Blender 4.1 so if the plugin doesn't work anymore, if you don't have these options you cannot expand them, you cannot uninstall and reinstall the plugin it does the same thing try to update blender because that's the most probable reason i will leave the estimate cut area from model go to cam operation setup and change the strategy from profile to pocket this is the pocket the intention pocket 
distance between tool path I will set it to 0.5 millimeters I want a very small engagement because it's a very small cutter tool bit a 1.5 millimeters tool bit so I think 33% uh, engagement is okay don't take into account the value written here because I haven't yet set the correct tool bit I will leave all the settings just as they are, maybe check the simplified g-code. Here is the most important part, the cam operation area. I will leave checked use layers, but I will change the value to 1 mm. And the depth start of the operation, since this is the pocket, the piece of wood that I'm going to cut is 21 mm thick, so I will tell Blender to start at 21 mm. I have to change the free movement height, of course. In order to avoid collisions, I will write a value of 35 millimeters and change the set max depth from object to custom. I want to mill 3 millimeters deep inlay, so I'm going to have a final depth of 18 millimeters. I will leave it as a climb cut, the spindle is clockwise. Leave all the settings just as they are, unless you really have to modify them. You can see my first video about using Blender Cam where I sort of explain what most of these options do. Change the feed rate to 2500 millimeters. The plunge rate I will set it to 99%. I want the Z movement to be equal to the X and Y movement. Also change the spindle to 18500. These values depend a lot on the cutter, on the machine, on the material. So these are the settings that I'm going to use for my project. But depending on the situation, there might be a lot of other values for here. Another important part is cam cutter. The cutter presets option will give me an end cylinder of 1.5 millimeters. So I simply select it from the list and I can move further. Depending on the machine, you might have to check this checkbox here, Output G-Code Trailer. It is already predefined on my computer, an M02, but if you are first using the Blender Cam add-on, you have to write here M02, which is and everything. Finish the operation, stop the spindle and everything else. For the machine, I'm using a preset. You have to set the post processor, the work area, all these values. Again, you can visit my first video about using Blender Cam where I explain quite a bit about setting the machine and saving it as a preset so you can easily select it from the list you can see here open source CNC and if it happens just as it happened here it automatically changed the units from millimeters to meters go to the scene tab and change the length from meters to millimeters now I can go back to the cam but I have to scroll down again and once the cam machine is set up, I can go up to the top where I have defined, I have created the operation and now I have this button, calculate path and export G-code. It will take a little bit of time because it is a complicated shape. So after around 35 seconds, I have all this path, this G-code for milling all the pockets. There are some, some little weird things, but not quite a lot. So let's scroll down and check the information the operation is 31 minutes long it can probably be optimized a little bit but i'm not going to do that now i will hide it also hide the pocket and now with the profile i will go here press the plus button create a new operation leave the strategy as is profile also the cut side is going to be outside scroll down Check on the simplified G-code, leave the use layers as is, select a 1mm layer or maybe lower, it depends on the machine and the cutter. The depth start, as I've told you, I'm going to use an 8mm thick stock, so the start depth is going to be 8mm. The free movement height, let's set it to 20. I will change the set max depth from, from object to custom and give a 5mm value, but having a 3mm pocket with a 3 millimeters inlay maybe there won't be a perfect contact of the bottom so let's make it a little bigger so I will change the depth and change it to 0.47 millimeters this way I'm sure that they will touch on all the bottom of the pocket leave the movement as climb adjust the feed rate I'm going to use a much smaller feed rate because all these pieces are going to be very small change the plunge speed and the spindle speed 
I will also use the end cylinder because all the parts that were outside corner on the initial object now are going to be inside corners so also use the same tool bit. A weird behavior for Blender Cam is even though it is selected a 1.5 millimeters tool bit if you look here it is a 3 millimeters tool bit so select it again from the list and it automatically updates all the values check the output Gco trailer button and now I can scroll up click on the calculate path and export g-code button wait a little bit and it's done this operation is going to take another 34 minutes because i have set a very low speed and a very low step down of course i can modify these values i can try different ways different speeds different feeds until i find the correct movement depending on the material on the machine because a wobbly machine a machine that shakes a little bit more or a spindle with a run out will tend to damage to splinter the wood a little bit more but the point here is the incredible speed that you can can simply turn an SVG to an inlay to an intarsion, not really how it is called, but you get the idea. It's super easy, super simple, super fast, and it does a great job with overlapping lines. So keep in mind whenever you have to do such projects that need inlays or intarsion, Blender is the way to go. So from now on, whenever I think about making an inlay, I wouldn't think at all about any other program. Blender is simply the best at doing this kind of job. It's quick it's accurate it gives you a lot of options you can select a lot of parameters so even if i did a project using freecut for example i would still go back to blender just for this little bit for the inlay thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and if you want you can also subscribe to my patreon page you can find the link in the description thank you very much all of you for the support and see you next time